So we're going to talk about blood types and figuring out compatible blood transfusions. I like to draw these as I'm talking about them and as I was learning them. So it's just another way to work on learning blood types and a different way to study them. So first, some key points to remember. First of all, we have a few A words, agglutinogens, which are also called antigens, but I'll tell you why I don't like to use that term, and antibodies, and then we'll look at agglutination. So agglutinogens, sometimes called antigens, are glycoproteins that are embedded in the cell's membrane, in that of the red blood cell. So the presence or absence of those agglutinogens determine what the blood type is. Also very important to remember that you cannot separate the agglutinogens from their red blood cell. Blood types are determined using the presence or absence of particular agglutinogens. And we're gonna talk about the ABORH system. So a blood type has one to two letters, A, B, O, and or AB, O is the absence of A or B. So there is not an O agglutinogen. Think of O as zero A and B. In addition, blood types have to have a positive or negative indicator. And what that's for is positive is yes, there is RH factor. Negative is no, there is not RH factor. And one of the things that you see a lot on the internet is sites or videos that talk about only A, B, O agglutinogens on blood cells, but you can't separate the A, B, and O from the RH factor. So we need to consider those collectively. And because of that, there really is no such thing as a universal donor or a universal recipient, and I'm going to show you why. Antibodies, which are also part of whole blood, are in the plasma part of whole blood. So they, if you centrifuge whole blood, can be separated from the red blood cells. And antibodies, as we'll see later in the immune system, are proteins in the plasma that work like weapons. And in a few different ways, they help protect us from foreign particles. So here's where the term antigen comes in and why I don't use it. Foreign particles are also called antigens. So I try not to use the term antigen when we're talking about blood typing because I think it gets a little confusing. So I'm gonna keep using the term agglutinogen. Antibodies, when we're talking about blood typing, and in the pictures you'll see, are often abbreviated as anti-A, anti-B, and anti RH. So I want you to be really careful when you are studying and practicing that you know anti refers to antibody. It does not refer to antigen or a glutinogen. So my suggestion as you're learning is write out the word antibody until you're a hundred percent solid with the fact that anti refers to antibody. Okay, so let's draw a couple of blood types and see how that works. So I have a beaker here because when I draw blood types, I tend to draw them in boxes because to me it's like visualizing blood in a beaker. So I'm going to start with A positive. And there are eight different blood types in the ABO RH system. So I took a minute to write out the eight blood types in that upper right corner for you so that you can see the eight different blood types we're working with. So I draw my red blood cell. In it, I write the type that I'm drawing. And then I put my anti, sorry, agglutinogens on my red blood cell. 
So this one has A's, and it doesn't matter how many A's that you put around your blood cell and RHs. You can just do one if you want. And then I'm going to put in my antibodies because these are in my plasma. These are going to protect me against blood types that are not my own. So that's for A positive. Now if I was going to draw a negative blood type, let's try B negative. So I drew my red blood cell, I named it B negative, and now I'm going to draw in my agglutinogens. Now I'm going to fill in my antibodies. So I would have anti-A because A is foreign to this B negative blood type. And I'm going to put in my anti-RH. So sometimes RH factor is called D factor. Either one is okay. And hopefully you're starting to notice a pattern here when I'm drawing. So this is kind of a quick and dirty way to double check yourself that your drawing is correct. I have to account for A, B, and RH. So they either have to be agglutinogens on the red blood cell or they have to be antibodies in the plasma. So on my left hand side with my A positive, I have A, antibody B, and then another agglutinogen, RH. And then over here in my B negative, I have anti-A, agglutinogen B, and then anti-RH. So if I counted for A, B, RH, and then A, B, RH. And again, this is just a little way to double check yourself. So I'm going to have you try this. So this is actually a homework question of yours. So pause here and try drawing out the blood for your recipient and your four donors. Ready to see the right answers? Here they come. Now I have drawn mine with different colors because when we do blood typing in the lab, you'll see that anti-A serum is blue, anti-B serum is yellow, and anti-RH serum is clear. I can't draw in clear, so I drew in gray. So pause here for a minute, check your drawings against these and make sure that you have them correct. So back to our transfusion question, which is one that you want to practice because it's probably one you might see on an exam. If there is a mismatched transfusion, here's what can happen. Agglutination can happen, and agglutination is the process by which an antigen or a glutinogen binds to an antibody and causes the red blood cells to precipitate out of the solution, out of blood tissue. This picture, B, shows anti-A, antibody A serum, that's been applied to our A positive blood, and you can see that the antibody A has bound to this antigen or agglutinogen A here on the red blood cell, and that leads to this process of agglutination. So this is what agglutinated blood looks like if we look at it, and then this is also what agglutinated blood looks like. So it looks like clumps of blood, almost like clots. It's not the same as clotting, it is a much simpler process, but it's dangerous because imagine all of this agglutinated blood 
accumulating in small vessels of the kidneys so that you cannot move blood through the kidneys and filter out waste product, that could eventually lead to septicemia. And this process of agglutination that occurs in mismatched blood transfusions is called a type three hypersensitivity reaction. One other problem with it is this process will go on and accumulate for half a day or more but you can't really see the problem from the outside of the body. You'll start to see it when the patient's vitals start to change. Um, maybe they start to be a little bit jaundiced because you're not able to get rid of nitrogenous waste through the kidneys. So let's look at our donor again, our donors and our recipient and see what we can do. So a couple reminders. Antibodies are in the plasma. Antigens or glutinogens cannot be separated from the red blood cells. So what that means is I can't take this AB positive red blood cell and remove just the RH or remove the A and the B agglutinogens. I can't do that. It just doesn't work that way. So when you answer these types of questions, you have usually at least two things to do and then maybe a third thing. The first thing is you have to figure out which of the blood types, which of the donors can give to the recipient. The second thing is you have to determine if we're giving whole blood or if we're giving packed RBCs, which means that we took a sample of blood, centrifuged it, spun it down, took off the red blood cells, and the plasma is separate. So what we'd give to the recipient in a packed RBC transfusion is only the red blood cells. Now, to be truthful in reality, there's gonna be a little bit of plasma, but it's very, very minimal. So we have our four donors, and the answers here are, there is no one that can give a whole blood transfusion because if we did, we'd see agglutination reactions. So I'm gonna show you what would happen if I gave, let's say, whole O negative blood to this B positive recipient. The anti B from the donor is gonna agglutinate with the B agglutinogens on the recipient cells. Even more, the anti-RH from the donor is now going to agglutinate with the RH on the recipient's cells. And that means those blood cells are going to come out of solution, do this, and really defeat the point of giving a person who needs blood blood that's just going to destroy their own cells, right? So that's that's not helpful. That's not a good situation. It's not a helpful situation. But what we can do is there are two donors who can give packed RBCs to our recipient. So now I have packed RBCs of O negative here and packed RBCs of B negative here. So I can give either one of those transfusions to this B positive person and there will be no transfusion reaction. And here's why. Because there's no antibodies in my packed red blood cells and the antibody in my recipient is anti-A. And there's no A in my packed B negative cells. There's also no agglutinogen A for my O negative packed cells. So either one of those is perfectly fine. And let's add one more thing here because this is a person that has RH positive blood. This person could also receive packed O positive blood. So I just drew here my whole O positive blood to show you that again, we can't give 
a whole O positive transfusion because the anti B for the whole O positive will agglutinate with the recipient's agglutinogens for B. But we can separate out that O positive blood into its packed red blood cell donation here and its plasma, which would be separate. And the plasma can be donated to someone else. So if we do this, now we can see that again, the anti-A has no agglutinogens in that packed O positive transfusion to agglutinate or have a transfusion reaction.